Streaming live, coming to you from the internet and Twitch. Oh no. You guys don't like my new intro? No? Beautiful. It's like my streaming jingle. Da, 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 coming Whoa. to you from across the world. Yeah. I love it. Well, good. I'm, I'm, I appreciate, I'm glad that someone appreciates me. Ah. So, guys, are you ready to play? Are we ready for some more Dungeons and Dragons? Dungeons and yeah. Dragons. Yes. I think so. Well, maybe that should be our jingle. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um... I guess we'll go ahead. Welcome back, adventurers, to another episode of The Curse of Strad with your cast here at Lakeside Legends. First... We have Imrilir Sardith, our Shadow Elf Ranger, played by Lore. Kinsley, our Furball Cleric, played by Blair. Me, a Changeling Druid, played by Arthur. And Francisco Guadalupe del Valle, a Changeling Fighter, played by Trevor. <laughs> and let's not forget about yours truly, your DM and Master Storyteller for this saga, DM David. Yay! Yay! I almost forgot. To <laughs> you have to oh cheer. God. You have to cheer. It's part of the deal. You guys are so out of it. Oh, it's, uh, good. Okay. it's true. It's part of well, our contract. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be. You gotta be awake. You gotta be awake Sunday nights. I only ask one week, one one night a week from you. Come on, come on. It's been a day. Don't worry. I'm day. dying. I die inside every week. <laughs> it's, it's worth. Well, it. hopefully, hopefully the story this week will uh energize you and make you more awake because there's a lot to do anyway on our last episode our heroes finished exploring the inside of the wizard's tower and managed to speak with the bodiless head imrilir discovered inside after casting the speak with dead spell it was revealed that the head belonged to a vistani who was virtually abducted by the monster hunter rudolf rudolf von Rudolf von Richten, see if I can figure out how to say his name, uh, in order to find a way inside the boundaries of Barovia. His goal, to hunt Strahd von Zarevich and kill the ultimate monster. While sitting outside the wizard's tower, a beautiful stranger appeared, claiming to own the abandoned covered wagon that sit dormant near their location. Through conversation, our heroes came to find that this individual was also a monster hunter who was looking for her former master, Rudolf von Richten. They informed the woman where she could find Rudolf, and in exchange, the hunter told them how they could sever the tie between Francisco's old eye and his new one. Apparently, Strahd had been using the lost appendage to magically spy on the misfits. Leaving the wizard's tower behind, our adventurers began their search for the werewolves, following the fortune Mad Madam Eva gave them. The beast card she pulled from her Taroka deck claimed that they needed to find such a monster that holds a secret hatred for their enemy. If found, she would help them in their quest to kill Barovia's vampiric ruler. After searching for a few days, our heroes were found by Kirill, the leader of the werewolves, and after learning they were here to kill Strahd, a battle ensued during which our feisty druid Me was bitten and infected with lycanthropy. Eventually, Kirill was struck down and the remaining werewolves lost their will to fight. They had lost their leader and they were not keen to lose any more. Our heroes earned the respect of the werewolves, so Kinsley and the others explained to them that they were looking for an individual that lived within the wolf pack. The werewolves agreed to bring them to their den so they could look, but no promises of protection were made. Once in the den, the werewolf individual our heroes were looking for was finally found. Her name is Zula, and she just so happens to be Kinsley's lost mother. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so crazy. At their reunion, Zula explained to Kinsley that she smelled just like the beautiful daughter she had lost over 120 years ago, and that she must be the cub Zula was never able to find. Oh. I know, oh. I'm at least 120-something. <laughs> Zula also explained how she and her family arrived in Barovia, how her husband had been sent away to Strahd as a punishment for questioning Kirill's authority, and how her son left to find his father, never to return. And that is where we are now. 
Boom, boom. So Kinsley. Now the rest of us are not with Kinsley. You right are not. Now. The rest of you are in the large part portion of the cave. Um, and Kinsley, you are in this what looks to be a room of worship. There is the large statue of the wolf headed version of the Mother of Night. Um, there is ba a bounteous treasure uh, in front of her. So many items, so much gold. Uh, it seems that these werewolves have been collecting a bunch of things to give to her in worship. Um, there are also cages behind the statue where there are children locked up. Uh, you assume that these are the children that have been abducted, that uh, Kirill forces to fight uh, to find whether or not they are worthy to become werewolves. You are sitting there with your mother, and she has just revealed to you that you are family. She told you her story. How's Kinsley feeling at this moment? Totally unsure and... Kind of like, man, a lot, probably a lot. Kinsley she just found her mom. She's gone 120 years without knowing who her parents are. Yeah. Or who she is. Yeah. Pretty intense. Or why She's... she is. <laughs> like, you know when you why feel is so much... <laughs> you know when you feel so much you like almost you don't know what you're feeling she's probably there yeah kinsley has reached the pinnacle of what it means to find out who you are find out where you came from and what's going on in your life so as we let Kinsley sit and simmer in those emotions and that feeling with her mom, we are going to cut over to the rest of the group. You guys are sitting in this giant cave. There you see um, uh, is another werewolf uh, in human form sitting in on, in the, on the ground. Essentially, there's uh, this little alcove. And he's sitting there playing a pan flute, and it sounds out of tune, uh, a little strange. And he's playing for all these wolves that are around him. Uh, it looks to be like a little like concert, you could say. Uh, then the other werewolves that brought you there are, are still in the area too. But um, from the shadows, you hear a voice. So, it appears my husband has been bested. As upsetting as this is, he attained what he wanted in the end. A death worthy of a warrior. Fortunately for you, as she says this, you see that a woman with stark white hair comes out from a corner. It is all white except for a single black strip that covers her eye. She's very skinny, young looking, um, and pretty strong physique. And she continues, unfortunately for you, or fortunately for you, our laws prohibit retaliation. Strength earns respect within our walls, and you have shown that you do not lack it. I do the, um, you know, the peck dance, you know, just... She can't see him <laughs> under your leather armor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do it anyway. It's for my own personal satisfaction. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> so she puts her arms behind her back and starts to slowly stroll over to where you guys are. Mm -hmm. And she walks around, looking at you, kind of sizing each of you up. She walks over to me, and she sees that me, you're beginning, you are sweating quite My a bit. My shirt's off right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're clutching your arm. 
And she comes over. She looks at you and says, Unfortunately, our laws are clear on another matter. This lady points to me with a claw-like finger. This one has been marked by one of our own. This makes him ours. I stand in front of me. Me? What happened? You are not oh. taking my little friend from me. I'm sorry. I'm afraid you don't have a choice, and neither does he. As she says this, the nine wolves that were sitting in the corner with the other guy all transform into humans and walk over, and they grab me. Me, do you want to go? Do you want to stay here? Uh... Because if you want to go with them, then I'm not going to fight. But if you want to stay with us, then obviously it seems we have to kill them all. I think I'd rather stay with you guys. Okay. And when I... this makes it easy, I pull out my glaive. <laughs> I'm not there, you guys! I'm not there! <laughs> um, but perhaps we shouldn't go to such rash... Um... Both of you, come close and hang on to me. Oh. Um... Um, they have already grabbed me. I'm kind of in a... I, I take me's hand. You see that as you do, this female uh, werewolf walks and strikes your hand away and stands in front, and she's like, I you cast, don't understand. I cast fog. I am being fought over by women. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um... Okay, this is uh, what's gonna happen uh, then. Uh, I, all of all of the werewolves transform. Everyone, roll me initiative. I cast Wait. fog though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to die. Don't, don't target me, please. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys! You what? realize? If you I'm realize being... there um, are like fourteen werewolves. This isn't about fighting. This is about getting out. I'm coming back for you, Kinsley. It's fine. But my mom. We'll get her. We'll grab her too. I got Wait. a two. <laughs> I I got a seventeen. Do you want me to roll? Twenty-two. Yeah, everyone roll. So. Um, I am making it two. Hey, also twenty-two because I got a nat twenty. Nice. I am um, making it very clear to both sides that I am not a target. <laughs> me? What did you get? Seventeen. Uh, Francisco. I got a two. Two. Okay. Let me roll for Spit and Zula. Quick question: Do they have? Spit is with me. Uh, okay. Do they have weapons? They don't or, need them. Are, they're werewolves. Or do they just you know fight with their claws? Yeah, right? I mean okay. they all they in they... humanoid form they wield um, spears. Okay, but they're all in in hybrid form now. Got it. <laughs> this happened so fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> he said he didn't want to go, so I'm just going to make sure he doesn't have to go anywhere. Okay, uh, Emerlier, you go first. Okay, so I have cast Fog Cloud. Um, I was next to me, so I had grabbed him. I grabbed Francisco, and I'm making them dash with me out. Can you do that? Can you force well, I can, people? I, they, yes. Well, if, if if they're willing, they can... They can run with you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but I'm, I think I, that takes you that an to... action to grab someone to go with you. Right. I don't think you can force their initiative to move up to move with you. You would have to carry them. Okay. Like I like you can't screw up initiative like that. Mm. <laughs> initiative also, order. Also, so, I think I am also currently grabbed right now. Yeah, he's got like nine sets of wolves' paws on him. Like you would have to rip they him. They couldn't from... grab that many. Couldn't grab him. Well, they she told them to grab him, so they have him. Please do not hurt me. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking. Hold on. Hmm. Well, I've you don't passed. have to do this. You know, I could always just leave later, right? I may, I may be a part of. You know their pack, but that doesn't mean I you can't still be a part of your pack. You didn't want to go. I can still leave. I hope, right? Can I leave? I turn to the the <laughs> lady. Can I leave at first, some point later? First, you have to prove if you're even worthy 
They're going to make you fight to the death. That is what. Wait, am I fighting with, with, with like kids or something? <laughs> are they gonna <laughs> make you kill children? <laughs> what? You are going to fight one of our newly transformed. Can I see underlings? This? Can I see this person? You she see she puts her, her like, fingers it's... to her lips and she whistles. And coming out uh, around the corner, you see it's a heavily smaller. It's the the it's area a... is heavily obscured. I can't. Oh. I already. Oh. Well, I then she fog. she whistles, and I guess you hear you hear footsteps coming forward, but you can't see anything. Uh, and she's like, "This, although it would be better if we could see <laughs> this." I. You said, like nine are holding him. How are nine holding so him? So they essentially what's happened is they have been they have surrounded him. Maybe not nine are holding him at the moment, but a little you, exaggerated. Yeah, you like to rip him from them. You would have to make a strength check against a lot of them, and then yeah, and then they'd have to roll dex checks to see if they can grab him again before you leave. Like. Running like, is a very, very poor option unless you want someone to get killed. I'll tell you that don't, now. Don't, don't worry about ungrappling me, uh, Imra. I, I can, you know. I, I turn I invisible. Okay. Okay. But I'm not dropping fog. Okay. So, uh, then what she's going to do is she is going to have everyone march further into the cave. She's... Excuse me, can I at least watch, you know? I, it, it's been a very long can they, day. Yeah, can they please they, stay here? <laughs> they they grab Francisco. <laughs> oh, they all, no, don't they, get too handsy. <laughs> oh, careful. They all, <laughs> they all start moving further into the cave. Uh, and as they do, Kinsley, you start hearing a commotion. Um, you and Zula hear uh, the crowd walking essentially pass the doorway and you see that they have a hold of me. Can I talk to my, uh, my, uh, what's going on at this, at this time? Uh, uh, Zula turns, turns to you. I'm not sure. Um, is, is, is the reason they would be interested in your little friend? Not that I know of. Well, let's, let's go find out. So she Kinsley, starts making... where are you? <laughs> We're making my way over. Okay, so eventually you make your way up to uh, to to me and Francisco, and you see that they have me and they have Francisco kind of just by the arm, and they're dragging him along. But it looks like their attention is set on me. As they're walking, uh, the lady uh, turns and looks at you, me, and she points towards a young-looking transformed werewolf that is walking along beside her, and she said. To make this a little more fair, what we're going to do is have you fight someone who's also recently been bitten. It wouldn't be fair to have you fight someone who is fully transformed, and it yeah. wouldn't be fair to have you fight a child. So you're going to fight this one. And you can see he's kind of like he's in like <clears throat> hybrid form, like he's been transformed enough that mm. he can he can be pretty dangerous and you can see that he's like he's still sweating a little because the lycanthropy is like taking hold of him like not very long ago but he's he he looks kind of bloodthirsty kind of like twitchy and like out of it like a little wily eventually you guys walk all the way up to the very you well you guys um walk to a staircase at the very back of the den and it begins to circle up you guys walk all the way up to the very top overlooking the cave and you see that a 20 foot diameter ring of stones dominates a rocky ledge on the mountainside. Within the ring, you see splattered blood and small gnawed bones. Lying on the ground outside the circle are several spears stained with dry blood. They bring you up top and they essentially toss me into the ring. They walk over, they surround the ring with Francisco, Kinsley, Zula, all of them kind of there. And I guess Spit, because Spit couldn't be 
transformed into invisibility either. Uh, and they look on and the lady walks forward and she's like, as you all have probably noticed, my husband is not returning. Kiru has been defeated. It is part of our laws and our customs that we do not harm those who have strength. However, one of the people that defeated my husband in battle has also been bitten. This makes him ours to do with as we please according to our laws. I am willing to give this individual a chance to become a part of the pack. He is going to prove himself worthy. If he wins, he will join us. If he loses, he will join those who have lost before him. And you guys see a pile of bones she points to outside of the ring, sat against the mountainside. Yes, Imrilir. Okay, so I'm following them, except okay. when I get to the kids in cages, I stop. Are okay. all of them going up? To Essentially, this? yeah, like all of the werewolves have gone up. You don't see any around you. I'm going to start unlocking those cages. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead and give me, I guess, uh, you're going to pick locks? My mm -hmm. girl. Okay. My girl. Go ahead girl. and give me a check. <laughs> I was hoping you would. Yeah. There it is my slot. There it is. Me is a great distraction. <laughs> <laughs> 24. Okay. First one unlocks. You know I go to the next one. Okay. There are a total of four cages. Each holds a child. Oh, come on. That's only a nine. Second one sticks. I tried it. Okay. That's a natural one. <sighs> um, your pick breaks. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. <laughs> Yes, it does. No, <laughs> your pick breaks with a natural one. Oh, Come on. No. Picks are more sturdy than that. Uh, with a natural one been... that she's been using multiple times, they Hold wear on, over look time. Up and see if there's a rule. Oh, this is my rule. About the rules, we have talked. Oh, so so after you rules. fail, if Man. you choose to do it again, the DC in which the pick breaks goes up. Because you had only failed one. once, the DC was at two. And you rolled a one. But it, but plus, it goes up two, four, six, eight, ten. But it would be a seven. Yeah, but it's a natural one. Time that was one. literally the only way it would have broken for the first like four or five tries. <laughs> like Critical it's not my fault. So it's upset. not my fault. Don't worry. I'm pretty sure they're wooden cages. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, you Are can they? find other ways. Uh, they're not. They're not wooden, no. Um, uh, but you would have. To, you would have to find. You can find other ways. I want to find something that I can use in place of <laughs> perhaps my more bones. Pick. How much were those picks? <laughs> they weren't too expensive. I'm gonna get them okay. fixed though, because I liked them. Yeah. I'm not gonna go buy new ones. <laughs> So I'm you looking. pick up the pieces of your now broken <laughs> lock pick. <laughs> Can't believe that. Uh, and go ahead, give me a perception or investigate check to see if you can find something. 19. Okay. So uh, the room is littered with bones. So again, done it before. Done it before. And you've done it before, but you lose your proficiency bonus. <sighs> So I won't make you do it at disadvantage because you have used bones to pick locks before, but I am taking away your proficiency and the same rules apply. And the DC in which you find more bones that work will go up if you keep doing this. And if you keep breaking them, eventually you'll run out of bones. Just so well, you know, you got three more cages to unlock. I try to open it again. Okay. Seven. You're going nope. away, Time Lord. <laughs> PC to break is now at, if you're going to do it again now at two don't roll a one well that ooh, oh my oh, lock, stop cocking I just realized okay. that plan's flawed 15 <laughs> nope, what? Do it. Really? what kind of locks are these if you have noticed I have used the same DC for every lock you've ever picked and it's not a 15 
you would think that it would change depending on the type of lock it is and how well the... You've never picked anything that wasn't a decent lock, I guess. That's only a 14. I can't imagine werewolves having locks. You have to remember, are... they go into towns and steal children and steal other things. Kinsley in the other room saw, in the room you're in, there is a massive pile of treasure. Yeah, Massive. Yeah, yeah. So you can't, can't use that logic. I keep... I don't have anything that will help me. Oh my. Hold on. Let me check one of my she racial like, features. Sure. I just remembered something. I think it'd I, be really funny if, she, if you had a spell prepared this whole time I for I don't it. have a spell that I'm not. Uh, I'm not a wizard. If rangers don't. I don't think rangers get that. Hold on. Great, you, you go back to what you're doing. I'm going right. to look up something real fast because okay. I think there's a feature that I have not been using. So we will switch back up to me and them. Uh, you see that this individual who has been talking, she finally walks to the edge and she goes, What is your name? Oh, um, my name is me. Well, me. I'm going to ask you because it's the polite thing to do. Do you mm. want to live? Yes. <laughs> you have been like cursed. That with lycanthropy, bit by one of our own pack members. By our laws, you are officially under my jurisdiction. As my husband died, that makes me pack leader. It's my decision, and my decision is you mm -hmm. fight to the death. If you lose, you die. If you win, you get to remain in my ranks. Is this acceptable? Be careful yeah. what you say, if not. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have much of a choice. <laughs> you don't. Um, are we, is he going to be fighting me in that hybrid form, or? It's whatever form he fe feels is best to defeat you, in which you may do the same. You can't transform. I mean, like, you can't <laughs> switch say, to like, a werewolf minute. right now. But she's implying that whatever you think is strongest for you, do. Okay. <laughs> so uh, she's going to walk away, and she's going to go and talk to the individual on the other side before the match begins. I need to think. <laughs> uh, I want to pull Zula aside. Okay. And as quietly as I can... I want to. Sp Was she bitten? What, Bianca? Was she, she was. Bitten? Or was she born this way? Do you know? I do not know. She has been around. I mean, I have. Goodness, I do not. I do not know. What happens when someone loses the curse if it's removed? Well, that depends. Um, the pack is no longer interested at that point. Um, they may or may not turn on that person. It it depends. Um. How much respect they have earned. Um, what are you thinking of doing? It could be very dangerous. I don't know whether or not me wants this. But I can't let her force him to stay. And... I just... I don't know. You see that as you were always trying to. I'm just 
always trying to protect them. Yes, I... I can understand that. You see that as she finishes her sentence, uh, Bianca is now walking away from the other boy. She walks to the side, and she's like, Now, let's begin. Me. Roll me initiative. <laughs> Animals. <laughs> DM, can I try another one of the locks? Uh, yeah, we will go back and forth during 13. this. Good. <laughs> Give us a few time. <laughs> okay, so we will switch back to Imralir. You are trying to pick locks. Uh, you have failed now three times on your bone pick. So your DC for it to break has jumped to six. Um, go ahead and give me a roll. What? What? Okay. <laughs> it was cocked and I can't, couldn't tell. Okay, hold on. Ah, oh, thank you. 20, dirty 20. Second one pops open. Oh, my life. Okay, I go to the next one. Okay. Come on, Merlin. No, Merlin. I failed that one. What it was, was it? Not, it was not a natural one. It was a three. Plus. So the, just tell me your total. My, the total without my um, proficiency would have been a six. So it's a six. Uh, so it meets meets it yes. meets, meets it so it beat it so okay but um since technically you failed the whole thing it jumps now to eight so now you if you roll below an eight it breaks well i just rolled a 17 plus my my sleight of hand is three so that's another okay. dirty 20. third one pops open we are going to <gasps> switch back to the fight wait wait werewolves <laughs> count as humanoids don't they they do they count as a humanoid Wait, so I could totally fake turn into <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. You could. But, um, I, I mean, could, but it probably wouldn't help me. It wouldn't that's help an action. you. Yeah. So no, you no, see no. that as soon as she says begin, this young werewolf bolts for you, and he is going first. Uh, my initiative was 13, by the way. I don't know. Yes. Yeah, okay. His was 17. <laughs> so he bolts for you, and he gets a multi attack. Uh, so the first one was a bite, six to hit, which misses. Nope. And the next one, an 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay, so he gets you with a claw attack. He comes racing out, tries to bite. You narrowly dodge out of the way, and then as you dodge, he swipes up and scrapes the side of your face, doing... six <gasps> slashing damage. And you have not wait. been fully healed. So your wait. HP is in the wait. 30s. Wait, wait. <laughs> Me He's excited is, about something. It is now your turn, Me. What are you doing? All right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, okay, that'll be stupid because you can just smell me. So. Oh. Give us some me shenanigans. <laughs> what are you doing? I got, I got, I got a couple ideas, but. I'm gonna go with could, what could potentially be an easy, um, easy thing to help. So, so, uh, but if I do the opportunity attack, okay, you know what? I'm gonna just do it. If it fails, I can move on. I'm gonna attack him with the cockatrice speak. Oh no! So you rip out the cockatrice speak. <laughs> okay. Try okay. Shove it in his chest. Let's okay. Go. Make an attack roll. <laughs> Please no. roll high. Plus three to hit, baby. Come on. Net 20! Net 20! Yes! All right. Yes! So yes. go. Yes. Proof. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my this God. This is what D&D &D is all about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and give me your damage, and then what's the save? Because he has to make, still makes the save. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Make yeah. Sure he does make turn. the save. Uh... uh oh. I don't think I have the. Uh, I don't think I had that written down. Uh, I, what do you remember? What oh, the it's uh, we just was. have to look up cockatrice. Um, yeah, because it'll tell me on the beak. Let me look that up right. real quick. Uh, and I then I'll do damage. You got a freaking <laughs> net twenty. Yeah. Oh, and what was the oh. damage we were using for it too? <laughs> Um, it's just a 1d4 plus one piercing damage. So you're banking on the fact that he fails the con save. Yeah, yeah. And it's a DC 11. 
And he has a plus two to con, so he just has to roll above a nine. Yeah, not just, you know. Mm. I kid you not, he rolled a seven. As soon, oh my gosh, so this guy books it for you. You dodge out of the way as he goes to bite. He slashes you up across the face. As soon as he does, you spin around and grab the cockatrice beak out of your jacket and shove it upwards right here through his chin. And as he does, he... And starts to turn and transforms into stone <laughs> right in front of you. Francisco <laughs> is losing his mind. Oh my freaking god. And that just happened. What just happened? <laughs> that is literally the coolest thing I've ever seen. Holy crap. I jump into the ring and I grab me and I start like jumping up and down. Like, as soon as that <laughs> happens, uh, Kinsley, you look over and you see that Zula still has a worried look on her face. And she says, Kinsley, how much does your friend me mean to you? Why, what's going to happen? Is it important that he stays with you? Yes. Okay. And we're going to tr switch back over to Emerlier. What? what do you mean? You <laughs> are uh, on your last lock pick. Come on, Marilyn, baby. Let's go. Go, go, go tree speak. I'm so happy. Oh, it's only a 12. <laughs> Come on, man. That was almost a natural 20. Oh. That one is an 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so let me think. You were at 8, up to 10, now up to 12. Roll below it, get below a 12, and it breaks. Okay, okay. Let's do it. It breaks. Okay. Um... I go and I look for more. Okay, we we'll get another perception or uh, investigation check. Ooh. 21. Okay, yeah, uh, that will find you another one. So you have now found one more bone. <laughs> the DC is reset back down to two because it's a new bone. 15. Okay, bumps it up to four. That's cocked. That doesn't work. Oh my gosh. Bumped it up to six. Oh, I'm like traitors. <laughs> Evil dice. So bad. Natural, <gasps> Natural 20. 20. Oh, there you go. There you go. You are able to slide it in and pop it open to get the last child out. You now have four children who are cowering in their cages and not sure what to do. Don't know what's going on because some invisible force and being is unlocking and opening <laughs> doors for them. They just and see they, bones being picked up and disappearing. They, yeah, they don't know if this is some weird trick, but they are freaking out out and we're Is gonna it? switch back over okay so zula says <laughs> if this is important to you then my dear it is important to me you she see she steps out into the circle and she calls bianca i challenge you what? Bianca turns and walks up Really? Okay. Yeah. So, after all these years, your true colors finally show. Your husband was trying to take over, and now you are. I accept your challenge. As soon as she says that, you see she tr like rips off her skin and transforms into a werewolf. And as she does, your mom does the same thing. <laughs> she's no, a little no. bit bigger. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> and your mom does the same thing, and she's a little bit bigger. Yeah! I cast... Uh, when I see this happen, I kind of go behind the werewolf, now statue, and I... I, uh, I will warn you, me. You try to do something. It could be very dangerous if they catch you cheating. I will warn you. <laughs> Please don't get my mom killed. No, she's a... In a fight with well, another. yeah. I mean, I'll wait till they're the most distracted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, so <clears throat> Zula comes running out. Zula is this big, stark white, giant werewolf, and you see that Bianca 
despite her also having white hair, but she had a little black, she is actually a, a gray werewolf. And your mom comes busting forward. Go, mama wolf. And, she, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so she comes running out. Um, and she's like, you are not going to take my daughter's friends away from her. <laughs> and as soon as she does, she like, ah, and she just boom, starts to rage. <gasps> what the? She's a barbarian. So your mom. Your mom starts to go into a rage. As soon as she does, you see her mouth gets bigger, her claws get longer, her teeth get huge, and she runs up and just starts wailing. She's so excited, I'm like about to cry. cry. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Ooh, okay. So she uh, gets two attacks per round. She's doing her bite. Uh, She definitely hits. So uh, we're, uh, we're adopting your mom. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. One d eight plus three, so seven damage to Bianca. Oh you guys my are just god! Just gonna watch me fight myself for a minute. I am okay. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, no, me is staring in absolute awe at Kinsley's mom. It's yeah, like, you see. You see that Zula runs up and she uh, she runs up and grabs Bianca's arm and just like takes a chunk out of it. Bianca freaks out uh, and then your mom has another attack. So she goes, what what was uh, Yeah, so she goes and uh, she starts to claw at Bianca's face. See if she hits again. Yeah, there's like almost no way your mom would miss. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. Yeah. My mom's a badass. <laughs> so let's go literally, literally... find those other things and freaking wreck shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Li- <laughs> literally the dream right there. The oh my werewolf. god. You just so gotta we... add one more flavor and it's exactly, exactly <laughs> the right soup. Uh, Bianca runs forward and she too bites, uh, or I guess she's not running forward. They are entwined in a mass of, of just fur and teeth and claws ripping at each other. Kinsley is just watching wide eyed, not knowing what to do. So she, uh, hits your mom both times as well. And they're just tearing at each other. Francisco, do you want to take a seat? Um, I'm afraid what you by what you mean by that me. <laughs> just, just like sit, you know. I oh, mean, uh, you know, I'm going to stay prepared in case these werewolves try anything funny, and I just have my okay. pole arm. I just have my glaive I, ready just in case. <laughs> I take the werewolf statue and I lay it on its side and I sit on it like a bench. <laughs> oh my gosh! So you see, it's so disrespectful. <laughs> Bianca, that is Bianca, so me. Bianca <laughs> takes it. <a> t- <laughs> Bianca takes a total of 12 damage out of Zula, and Zula's turning uh, around, and Zula got her two times again. Oh, is I guess that damage you're raging, hacked? so having, yeah, I gotta have oh, that. Shoot. I forgot. Fuck. So that's 12 halved. Let's see. So that's six damage. Oh man, raging werewolf. Raging werewolf. Dude. That is um, so cool. And then let's see. So it's a. Uh, da, 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 da. So that when your mom was an adventurer, she was a barbarian. Yes, I she was, was not expecting that. I wasn't either. Possible Man. next character. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my next character is a bar- in the new campaign. Right. <laughs> so Zula Zula turns around as uh, Bianca has uh, has Zula by the throat. You see that uh, she turns um, her head. And she ha- still has Bianca's arm in it, and she rips another chunk out, and uh, uh, you see B- uh, Bianca's arm has to let go, so she turns and bites her neck, and they're still just ripping and tearing at each other. And she hits go both wolf times. defending they me! Both, they they both have hit every time. Jeez. Yeah, but you're only doing half damage to my mom. <laughs> That's, That's true. Right. 16 no damage to Zula, halved. Me. So 8 damage. Because as werewolves, they would be doing the same, like, damage. Same attacks. They're but both doing claw. But if you're having... And, right. And uh, because Zula is a barbarian, like, she gets her a stats, plus she gets to a her... plus to her hit. Mm. So mm-hmm. Zula has a plus 6 to hit. 
So she's essentially ripping this woman apart who's just kind of like the yappy dog who's just trying mm-hmm. to like like see so you you guys hear that as they're they are fighting you just hear like growling and grunting you don't understand what they're saying um but they are essentially are yelling at each other um if anyone wanted to cast speak um, with animals you can yeah, hear what they're yeah, saying i mean i'd like to i'd like to listen in okay I'm, me go ahead yeah uh, I, I at the very beginning i'm like first thing i do I'd like to hear this. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so you uh, cast speak with animals, and you essentially you hear surprise in Bianca's voice, and you hear that she essentially <laughs> did not realize Zula was capable of this. And the last 120 years, Zula has not let loose because Kirill, Kirill turned them. And her family thinking, oh, you know, they're big. They're going to make good werewolves. But they're fur bogs. They're naturally calm nature. And because they didn't want to do evil things, they did what they could to survive. And they, they did what they were told to make sure they met the quota. But they have never had a reason to really fight. And now they do. Zula has a reason to fight. For oh, both the true Are you gonna sheep cry and Hannah? wolves clothing. <laughs> For the damage. fact I like I I feel like oh that's adorable, but also oh I'm not sure if I should be the one being saved. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so cute. Eventually, you guys see that Bianca is starting to slow down. She's starting yeah. to get hurt, and she is not doing well. Not my bear fighting for her cub. It has gotten to a point where Bianca starts to lay down. You see that she has put herself in a position allowing dominance to transfer to Zula. Oh, we are all just being game alpha. I lean over to Kinsley. Uh, I'm not in the know, pit with you. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, right. With I'm me, not right? My right, mom I'm, jumped down, and I'm like, <laughs> I, I lean over to me. This is so freaking insane. This is like the coolest woman ever. Don't tell my mom I said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to agree. You guys watch as Zula, in her hybrid form, walks over to the now bowing, essentially Bianca. She puts. Her front claw, her foot, essentially on Bianca's face. And she transforms back into a fur bulb as she does. Her foot still on her face. You will leave here. You are not a part of this pack anymore. You are dead to us. She lifts her foot off and steps back a few paces. Bianca slowly starts to get up. And you see she books it for the side of the hill. She starts to run away. Which Judd's gonna not be. So I broke my picks Uh, for no reason. Real quick. Um, DM, we have yes. established that I am covering my eye with an eye patch, correct? Or like cloth, right? Um, yeah, I essentially. Okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, you had can... mentioned that before to try and <laughs> yes. keep Strahd from watching. Francisco, right. but what if Strahd um, is told by this lady, like, what if she goes to Strahd? Oh, that is a very good point. Oh, uh, I feel like killing her right now. I mean, this may be a dangerous thing i don't know i i raised my hand um mama werewolf uh but uh it um do we were really no she's my mom though i you know she's big and strong and she kind of you know <laughs> okay uh, yeah looks like you <laughs> looks like you i'm making some assumptions francisco's dumb but he's not that <laughs> dumb <laughs> um should we be letting her go i no longer see her as a threat and I don't think anyone else here does. She looks around at all the other wolves, and they just they stand there. Is she going back down the way they all came, or is this... She's so... running down the side of the mountain. Okay, so I wouldn't see her. Mm-mm. 
She looks, Zulu looks around at the rest of the pack, and slowly, they all start to kneel. Officially, I will be taking over this pack. If anyone wants to challenge that, come forward now. Uh, makes my life easier. See, nobody moves. Very well. We are doing things differently from now on. We are not going to follow Strad anymore. He is not the individual we think he is. He is not an all-giving and all-knowing God. I do not expect any of you to fight him, but I... You see, as she says this, she looks over at Kinsley. Have unfinished business. That my family and I must attend to. You see, she looks over. Shivan! She calls and another wolf comes forward. You are going to be in charge while I am gone. No more abducting children and forcing them to fight. From now on, we will find orphaned children, forgotten children, ones who have nowhere else to go, and we will offer them a new home with us. That is how we will make our pack grow. See, they all nod. And she starts to walk over to Kinsley. She grabs Kinsley's hand and walks over to me. Child, are you all right? Uh, yes, actually, I'm doing much better than a... Uh, much better than I have in a long time. Do you want this... Yes. ...gift? Yes, I are, do. Are you sure? Without a doubt. I will not force you to be a part of this pack, but know that joining it, you would be around people like you. From now on, it is going to be very difficult going into towns, being around people. Be prepared. Life is about to get very difficult for you if you keep this. I think I've... I've grown up with worse, probably. <sighs> okay. And she starts to make her way down the stairs. Everyone following. We are going to switch back around to Emerlier as this is going on. You now have <laughs> children in front of you that don't know what to do. Very scared. Freaking out. Can I hear what has been going on upstairs? This is as the fight is going on. You hear fighting going on. Okay. <laughs> A very short fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I have no idea what's going on. <clears throat> yeah, essentially. Little ones, do not be afraid. Follow the sound of my voice. See, they look around. And they start to look at each other. Come. This way. And they move forward and come out of their cages and they kind of look up at the statue, thinking it's the goddess. <laughs> <laughs> You are free. I will not let anyone hurt you. Where do we go? We cannot leave. Do you have any home? 
I wouldn't even know how to get there. Me either. Do you know your village? I came from Feleki. I came from the village of Barovia. I came from Kresk. Me too. Do you want to go home? It's all right. Don't want to stay here. Me neither. Take me home. All Do these your... different little voices. Do your parents love you? Don't know. Cut this love. The one who asked that, I just, I wrap my arms around them. They can't see me. <laughs> Shh. It's okay. And they kind of just pet their hair. <laughs> <laughs> if you Did do you this? Not... <laughs> what? Oh, did this to hear this coming from you is funny. <laughs> from me, Lore, or from my character? Both. <laughs> <laughs> You're ruining the moment, man. <laughs> Love the child. is warmth. Love is kind. Do you love me? I love all the little ones. What should we do? For now, we leave the cave and we find a place for all of you to rest. Will you lead us? I drop invisibility. <gasps> so they all gasp and you see the one that asked you if you loved them turns and she goes the night mother and she runs over and grabs your leg uh, um when i drop invisibility i would have immediately cast uh i think i have disguise so. hold on i'm resisting making so many jokes right now <laughs> you are such a jerk okay i'm sorry no, I don't I have help it. it i've got so many um I cast, hold on. Uh, nope, okay. They're just going to see me. Um, I am no night mother, but I fight for freedom. And as someone who was once you, if I can help it, I will never let there be another. Come. And I start leading them out of the cave. Okay. Um, as you are leading them out, you hear people I'm going, coming down the stairs. I cast, because I don't know what's going on, pass without a trace on my little group. Hide. Okay, they're all going to hide. Let me roll stealth checks for them. <clears throat> I hide with them. They are all commoners, so mm -hmm. it will be whatever they roll plus a 10, because it's passed without a trace, correct? Yep. Okay, so two of them hide super well, and two of them hide okay. I stick but... with all of them, and I rolled a 27, or what? 28. Okay, so if you are helping them, I'll give them advantage. The two that rolled poorly will probably need it. One of them still rolled poorly. Um, so that one is going to try to hide. Uh, but I'm going to have a couple wolves make perception checks. Or what's their passive perception? Let me uh, check. It's pretty high. Werewolves are? 
Yeah, because they have the, the sense of smell and stuff. Right. Let me see. Passive perception's 14, and they got a 14, so they meet. So no one notices them. Um, as they come walking, the congregation, con congregation is walking down the stairs. You see leading them is the fur bulk that Kinsley was with. You would see I that... have actually seen Kinsley with her? Because she had left us and then met her mom. Um, but I would so... recognize her from the vision. Yes, you would recognize mm. the individual from the vision. But also, you walked in the room as Kinsley and her mom were walking out. Because okay. Kinsley and her mom oh, were that's in right, there. That's right. Yeah, that's so right. you would have saw them together. Okay. Um, you also happen to see that Kinsley's with her. Uh, they're holding hands. And me and Francisco are close behind. And, and I don't so see the thing. one who was all like, hey, corner, be a part of our... Nope, you do not see that one. I have no can shirt I on. Can I make... Uh, can, <clears throat> I, can I tell... Can I ascertain, put the pieces together? Yes. I mean, you don't even have to roll. Having them okay. come down the stairs, you ascertain that the atmosphere has changed. Yeah, as we're coming down, I'm like fangirling. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was like the coolest fight I've ever seen. Like, that was so cool how you just like ripped into her and she was clawing at you, and it was, and but you weren't getting hurt, and it was, oh my gosh, it was so freaking you know, cool. At, at first, I thought you were talking about my fight being cool, but I oh get no, it. that was super top too. That's why I jumped into the ring. It was so good to watch all of you guys. I was like, oh, oh, well, oh. This, thank you very much. But uh, I mean, I did, I did hurt quite a bit. Oh, you see that she oh, is still kind of like her. bleeding on her neck. I'm I'm casting cure wounds. I wonder where Imra went. Yeah, she missed yeah. out on it. Oh good no, fight. I don't have cure. I lied. I don't have cure wounds. <laughs> That's okay. She's not I, like. She's I'll not... healing word her at least. Okay. I will do. You know, for <gasps> once in my life, I had a pretty cool moment. That was a really cool. That was like I got her a, one I, big I, knockout and eight. sit. Eight. Okay. I rolled a four. First time in two seasons. <laughs> she, she, she she turns and she's like, "Oh, that feels so much better. Thank you, thank you very much, my dear." Thank you. Hi. I honestly did not know if I had that in me. Um, it has been a very long time since I let loose and. I have not, for fear that there would be repercussions. I did not know how the pack would react if I took over so forcefully. Um, and that is what held me and my family back for so long. But at this point, I had nothing to lose but, but you. And I couldn't stand that. I knew that I had to make a stand. Thank you. So, are you saying that we're all good now and there's, like, nobody trying to hurt people anymore? What, what, I'm what, saying this from my my <laughs> <laughs> spot. What was what? that? Who, who's there? Ah, there she uh, is. Ah, look in. Now I know where she went. Who would be our friend, Imra? Oh, uh... What are your intentions with the little ones? Now that there's new management. You see that as you <laughs> point them out, you are surrounded by little children. And then Spit comes up... Hey! What are you doing? <laughs> That's my you're, mommy! You're not stealing more children, are you, Imra? I wasn't going to steal anything. I was setting them free. Okay. They all want to go home. Okay, that makes sense. Spit, it is okay. Your mommy is still your mommy. She's still yours. Spit comes walking so up. <laughs> <laughs> go away! Hey, hey, hey. Be no. nice. Be nice. You be nice. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> Sassy. Yes, I am your I am the baby. You are yes. always the baby, but you have a loving home with you. They do not. And we help those we help those who need it. <laughs> I just hold his hand. <laughs> so. I can. I just imagine Spit walking up to one of the children and just knocking one of them over. 
<laughs> Spit just he's... pushes one over. Hey. <laughs> he's, he's like, Be nice, Arude. I'm going to introduce timeout. He's like Stitch, oh, no. just goes. <laughs> Push this over. I can't help but imagine the baby from dinosaurs too. Ugh. Oh my gosh! <laughs> so again. You, <laughs> so you I guys. I apologize for bringing that up, Lore. You guys have successfully, uh, I guess, uh, got away from uh, the horrible things that could have happened. <sighs> what? Is the group wanting to do now? So, my question, what is your intention with these little ones? Well, they are not officially part of the pack yet. I, um, not that I need to explain myself to you, uh, but As one I... of them, as one who was one of them, I expect an explanation. Well, I don't know what that what you are referring to but so you know um the horrible lady that was taking your friend here upstairs has been disposed of by me and this is now my pack and we are doing things differently if these children want to stay and they want to have the gift bestowed upon them that is up to them if not, you are free to take them. This is no longer going to be a den of death. So, little ones, what do you want? Let's let chance decide. <laughs> okay, above a 10, they'll stay. Below a 10, they want to go home. Um, yeah, and I'll roll individually for all of them. Why not? Two of them really want to stay. <laughs> two of them got nat 20s. Oh, uh, but the other two, you see that a little girl, maybe eight years old, and a little boy she has by the hand. He's maybe four. She's, we really want to go home. Where is home? Kresk. Well, right. I think we have our new destination, no? Can we see a map, DM, or could you like... You guys can open up your map. Let me mm -hmm. grab that for you. So, um, Kinsley, Kinsley's mom, I presume. Um, what should I Oops. expect? One I second, mean... me. There we go. What should you expect? And this is a... Where is Kresk? My... One of my screen. Okay. Oh, okay. it's, it's so pretty it's on, close. So it's on the way to... Um, mm, the it's wine. out of the way. Well, I mean, it's kind of... Where's the wine wizard? So when you guys got here, you came to a crossroads, and it pointed this way. Right. Okay, the wizards not... of... Right down there. Okay, so it's not too far, though. Mm. Okay. So you want to know what awaits you? Well, actually, the thing about it now it might be more fun to find out as I go along. What are you? I kind of want to know what's going to happen. You know, is there like a medical <laughs> procedure, a medication <laughs> herb he should take? Wait, 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 wait. Like... Um, Me? Oh, are um... you are you going to? remain um with this curse well i wouldn't call it a curse per se. um but yes i do plan on keeping it for the longest time I've all right been... 
so he may be okay uh, with surprises. But <laughs> if he's going to be with us, I would like to know what to expect. First child, why? Why do you want to keep this? Well, for the longest time, I've not really been so connected with my roots, so to speak. And ever since I've been with these guys, I've found a new sense to become stronger. And I'm not what you would call a very powerful or able to protect people easily kind of person. And I'd like to be able to have that strength and have that connection with nature as well. That as odd as it may seem to s some feels right. It's never felt more right. I can understand the need to feel like you need to be stronger. That need is what led me down my path. Why I became the way I am. And why I allow myself to drop into a rage. That is what helped me. I will warn you, it is going to be very painful. It is going to be very scary. Eventually you will be able to control it. But until after your first full moon, it's going to be difficult. So she goes into an explanation of how you are going to feel very, like, panicky, um, constantly, like, sweating, hyperventilation. Essentially, what's going to happen is you're going to deal with um, some issues up until you learn to control this. So mechanically, until after your first full moon and you get through it, um, you are going to be in pain. And when the first full moon happens, you will be you will do a transformation um, and you're going to have to make nature checks to see if you can control it. Um, and then when you're around people for the first little while, when you're in cities, you'll have to see if you can control your base desires and not freak out. Um, so we're, we'll talk about the mechanics later, but you have until the first full moon for us to kind of talk about it, which uh, yeah. Zula explains is only a couple of days away. Oh, so, bad, yeah. Um, so it can be a gift if you can survive. Well, I've survived this much, and honestly, though, <laughs> not too many. It kind of sounds like fun. I and say that we always have someone keeping watch on me at all times. We yes, take shifts, yes. like keeping watch at night. Yes. Me watch. And... <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Me. Mm -hmm. If at some point you can't control it, as much as I don't want to take a decision this big away from someone, I will remove the curse if you can't keep yourself from hurting others. Well, if it becomes that big of a problem, I suppose with you around, I could at least always try again. This is something I really do want to be able to control and be able to have in my life. It is, it's, it's never felt more right. So if it takes more than one try, honestly, pain is nothing. It sounds like masochism to me. Not the bad. <laughs> well... <laughs> 
or power hungry. What time is it? I'm tired. With all I've been through, pain... Yes. <sighs> it can be not a bad thing. It's probably, at this point, Imrelir, probably around 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm. The... I believe that you can control it and learn to use it. I just want to let you know I'm going to keep you from harming anyone. That's fine. I mean, again, I can always try more than once. It's not like I can't get reinfected, right? I will warn you, it is quite a bit more dangerous the second time around. Well, in that case, I can always just hang out with you guys <laughs> until it happens. No, I can always try and knock you out before you do anything too crazy. It's true. Well, do remember, I could probably just cast Moonbeam on myself if I start transforming. If you're in the right state of mind. Uh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, it is getting late. Um, I Kinsley has not explained this to anyone. Um, but I would like to come with you. My family has been captured by Strad, and I need to get them. I need to save them. All right. Um, well, we, I mean, I don't mind having an, another, another companion, though, the, <laughs> the two, the, the, what, what happened? I was busy um, unlocking the cages to get the kids out. <laughs> well, it was a great and epic, uh, wait, what is that? The wolf uh, baby who wanted you to be a part of the pack. So hot. I can't. Uh, oh, maybe, okay. maybe. That's great. Yes, join us. Um, no, so, I let her go. Maybe Francisco uh, can was explain. Was that wise? If, if, I mean, uh, it sounded like her husband was totally into Strahd. So I don't believe she will be a threat. You don't think she's going to run to him and say, "Hey, the wolf pack's not your buddies anymore, and now it's more dangerous." And I don't know. How can it be any more dangerous than it already is? He could get more aggressive before we're ready. That is not his way. I've been here 120 years. You are not the first group of champions that have come here. But it seems we are the first to turn the wolf pack against him. That, that is true. Besides the point. <sighs> As much as I would like to personally take these children home, is there anybody who would be willing to take them to Kresk? It is trustworthy. Won't I mean, at this it point, is... they're under her command. The problem is, Kresk is an incredibly fortified place. It is extremely hard to get in. And we have only been able to capture children who unrulingly left the walls. What are you two doing outside of the walls? I asked the little ones from Kresk. <laughs> what are you doing, little ones? Nothing. Oh, that sounds very suspicious. We wanted to see what it was like on the other side. And have you learned your lesson? Yes. Yes, so when we take you home, are you going to leave the walls again? Never. No, good. Not Someday. Until we kill Strad. Okay. Maybe I just was get getting away. to that, but I was going to be more gentle about it. Oh, I'm sorry, Chuta, sorry. Oh, <sighs> I'm going to just stop talking right now. <laughs> there will come a day. When you will be able to go outside your walls and have all the freedom you want. But for now, trust your parents. Trust the people who will want to keep you safe. Understand? Okay. You okay. see her little brother just like... 
<laughs> that was me as a kid. <laughs> the, no, the that you know that the more you pick the, your nose, Ew. the deeper the hole until you reach your brain, and then it stops working. <laughs> His eyes go wide, stops picking his nose. I, I look at behind him. <laughs> <laughs> I look at Imran here and I'm just like, is that true? <laughs> you didn't know? It's like digging a hole in the ground. The further you go, the deeper it gets. The difference between the hole and your head is there's a brain. That's why my mother always told me to stop. Oh, I thought it was just because she, <laughs> I, she got upset at me wiping it on everything. Oh, maybe no. It's, maybe that's why you have such a difficult time being smart. <gasps> I am offended. You ah, did it to yourself. I read books. You never finish them. I know three languages. I'm smart in a different way, okay? <laughs> that just means that the part of your brain you picked is the part that don't doesn't work. The Friends fact that well. you can speak three languages is a testament to the fact that you may have been a genius. <gasps> Wait. But you ruined it. I Francisco, think, actually, I know. Do I speak another language? <laughs> try do I speak that the way too? Wait, I'm... try try to project a thought into my brain. <sighs> Dandelions and pickles. Uh, how did you know? It's because I can read your mind. Oh, you are incredibly imralier. I know. Honestly. I'm exhausted. Where can we take a nap or sleep just for a really long time? Yes, I was going to mention maybe we could stay the night here and we can take off in the morning. Yeah, uh, that might be yes. best. So uh, she leads you into another cave um, where it is uh, kind of cozy. There's a little fire going. Um, it's not a huge cave, maybe like 20 feet by 20 feet. So it's a little cozy. Um, she's like, everyone can stay in here. Um, this is this is my den. Hmm. So does anyone want to do anything before they go to sleep? I tell Francisco that I know four languages. <gasps> Just <laughs> <laughs> <gasps> um, I go ahead and I set up my little prayer you see that as with you... my candles and incense. As you do that, you see Zula comes over. Can I join you? Of course. You see she pulls out a little uh, symbol. And you see that it matches the symbol of Saloon. I pull out my symbol. So, your deity is the same as mine. Uh, she's, uh... I think she's the reason I'm here. Lead me back to you. See a tear comes to her face and rolls down her cheek. And she just puts her head against yours, closes her eyes, and begins to pray. Um, I go back out. Do I see any of the other wolves, out, the werewolves out there? Are they like, what's going on out? In, yeah, I mean, there? um, uh, the werewolves are totally cool with like being up at night. So yeah, there are werewolves walking around. Some are sleeping, some are eating. Like, yeah, they're all over. Where's the one that was playing the pan flute? Ooh, okay. Um, so you begin to look around. Give me a perception check to see if you can find him or investigation. Who will give? Okay, that's not the bad thing, Time Lord. Our perception is 19. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So you walk back into the big cave <clears throat> and, uh, you walk into the little alcove and you see that he is still sitting there. And he is just kind of holding his pan flute. Um, upon closer inspection, you see he's pretty old looking. Mm. Um, not a young whippersnapper by any means, but still pretty dangerous when he, when he needs to be. He's sitting there and he's got a bone. He's kind of like picking his teeth with. I take out my pan flute. Okay. I what start do you do? to play. You see that as you do... His ears start to perk up, 
And he looks over at you. Go ahead and give me a performance check to see how well you can do it. Oh, no, I rolled not great, but I am proficient. <laughs> Let's see. Ten. Okay. It's been a while. You see, he looks over. Ah, I see you are about as uh, proficient as I am. And he pulls out his, and he starts to play slightly out of tune like you. <laughs> little, <laughs> little uh, uh, I'm flat a little notes here. Rusty, okay. Uh, well, if this is you at Rusty, then I'd love to hear you at your prime. This is me after ten years of practicing. Uh, it, it. I haven't had a reason to play in a long time. Music is pretty magical. It brings people together. And he says, as he says that, wolves are starting to come in. They're in their wolf form. And they come and they kind of sit and listen to you two play. Hmm. Do you know this one? And I start playing a song from when I was a child. It's like a jiggy jig thing. Oh, I was going to say, mm. is it like the Shire music? Mm. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when they're dancing in the... Yeah, yeah the yeah, green yeah. dragon in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's make an intelligence roll for him and see if he does. Got to remember, Barovia once know, was that's why part I... of that. And music yeah, and yeah, history yeah. lasts a long time. You're old and at one. <laughs> I've never heard this type of music in my entire life. Can you try to play along? I can try. I rolled about the same as you on your performance, so yeah, I mean, he kind of <laughs> plays it too. <laughs> Can I see if I'm getting any better? Now that uh, my lips are warmed up. I mean, after playing it one time, probably not. We've been at it for a couple minutes now. Yeah, but playing an instrument, you don't get better after practice. Have you ever... Okay. She is proficient. She is the pan flute. She is proficient in playing the pan flute. That's cool, but you just said you're rusty and haven't played in a while. Right. Have you ever... Warm up. Okay, I know you. You've never played an instrument to proficiency and then stopped playing and tried to play again. But vocally. It takes a long time. Vocally is different. That's muscle memory. I mean... I guess this is muscle memory too, but at the same time, it's difficult. You can't, you would have to practice for a couple of days. It's like working out and then not working out and then working out again. Yeah, you your muscles, you muscles. can't, after a few minutes, you can't get back to where you were. Trust with me, after playing clarinet again, <laughs> it's Look, hard. I, I, I know from piano picking all up the trumpet. Time. From picking up going like two years without playing trumpet and then coming back to it. <laughs> That was rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. it is rough. Came back. A few okay, minutes okay, is okay. not enough. <laughs> okay. Anything else you want to do, uh, Imrilir? Um, after playing for a while, I'll go back, but I'll find a corner and do my my mantra. Okay. With my um, if no one, I no, I, okay, me. What do you want to do? All right. Um, I go off into a corner with Henrietta. Um, <laughs> I, I just real quick. I'd like I like imagining the whole like cockatrice bit, and Henrietta is just in my arm. Um, <laughs> and so um, so I go to my corner, and I bring out my little potted plant with my witch's fingers. I put Hen Henrietta down, and I look around, make sure no one's around me. I pull out the head, and I set it down. And I um, the head, what head? The uh, the head I took from the chest that no one knew <laughs> that I took. Oh right, yeah the the vista. Oh no no head. no, that's right. You guys did know I took it. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, you guys know about that. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead, and I put my hands down on the earth, and I try to kind of like meditate. And I'm going to go ahead and cast my uh, new fourth level spell, Divination, as a ritual. I mean, I don't really need to, but I'm kind of just treating it like that. Hmm. Okay. So, Using a head, a plant, and a chicken. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> this is the most hilarious that spell is casting. That's so me. <laughs> <laughs> so divination, basically, you can ask essentially like a god or a god servant um, a question about uh, the future. It has to be a truthful one. It can be a omen, a cryptic phrase, and just straight up whatever. And me's kind of trying to connect towards Mother Nature, kind of what he's trying to get more and more in tune with. And as he's so the wild mother, yeah, mother. Yeah, like, yeah, she would be, as far as I know. I, I think. Oh, uh, but she's in a different plane. She's a. That's a different. There's mm. some sort of deity that actually uh, that has to do with lycanthropy. I don't oh, know. there is. It's Saloon. Yeah. It's my god. No? My goddess. It's... Yes, it no. is Saloon. Saloon deals Saloon. with werewolves. Oh, werewolves. She's the goddess okay, I was, of the I was thinking, well, okay, no, so of then... lycanthropy. Of lycanthropy. Or oh, wh- anywhere. Okay. Where anything. Mm-hmm. That is Saloon. There was, there was another one that had to do with some sort of animal creatures, like a monkey guy or something. Well, I, I know call, there's... But... Um... <laughs> no. Um, um, um... Anyways... Basically, trying to get in tune with nature, or the closest thing to a god of Mother Nature, or just nature itself, to ask it directly. Yeah. Okay. Up to the DM to decide what that be. So, what's your question? <sighs> Hold on. Let me just double check. Okay. Uh, concerning a specific goal, event, or activity. I'm trying to remember the items. Sorry. Hold on. It there is. was. Hollow bone. Uh, the, 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 the one to do. Okay. Can someone list off the items we're looking for? There's Tome the, of Knowledge. Tome of Knowledge. Holy symbol and weapon. No, okay. So my question is going to be towards um where uh where should we look for the weapon? You sit in silence for a while trying to listen to hear if you can get a divining spell correctly angled toward what you need I have to look back on your fortunes real quick you hear it's supposed to respond in like a phrase or a word it says that it can be. Hold on. Uh, let's see, the the GM offers a truthful reply. The reply might be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen. Okay. So this is different than commune. Yeah. Right. If I remember, commune has a chance for you to go insane. Does it? All right, they're one of them, something to do with communicating with a god. I was looking at wizard spells at one point. Oh, uh, it's not commune. Commune it's is probably, a cleric. Probably thing. a warlock thing. Yeah, yeah maybe. I don't know. That would make a lot of sense. Uh, see, it's. Yeah. So you get back a very soft voice. And it responds, Where a silver dragon hides, the people that worked so hard for this land to save it from the evil Strad, that is where you will find the sun sword. It's probably the where we where the revenant is sending us because they have the silver dragon. Mm-hmm. And you see that as you do that, all of a sudden Henrietta and the head vanish. <gasps> you said you oh. put them out and you put your plant out, so your plant vanishes too. 
It can the magic consumed all three of them. Is that how that works? Yeah, uh, if you the if, um as, well, I mean, incense, check your spell. Incense and a sacrificial offering appropriate to your religion together worth at least 25 gold pieces which the spell consumes. Mm. Oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> you stuck so a chicken <laughs> ahead and a plant. You just lost your chicken. <laughs> <laughs> me, me looks for a second and just let goes like. <laughs> I mean, Spit is gonna be so disappointed. Right. I mean, I was gonna sacrifice Henrietta anyway, so I mean. <laughs> All right, okay. Good. What was what was the plan with Henrietta the whole time? I wasn't yeah. gonna ask, no, but now that she's gone, here's where here werewolves. Here's a peace offering. <laughs> here, let come come close to me so I can trap you and and then force you to uh you know like bite me and then you know answer my question. <laughs> That's such a complicated way to. Uh, now turn we'll never know if that would have worked. <laughs> uh, so. Going over to Francisco, what is he wanting to do? Very short. He just kind of pulls out an old broken stopwatch, opens it up, looks at the picture inside for like a couple seconds, confirms its existence, and then puts it back. Then kind of looks at Kinsley and her mom. Oh. I'm so <laughs> Why do you think Emma left? <laughs> okay so uh eventually all of you go to sleep um and this is where we're going to take a break wow. uh yeah it's about time for that so everyone at home thank you for watching we are going to take a 10 minute break we will be back it is 7 36 now we'll be back at 7 46 and we will continue our adventure now that our heroes have procured their first reading from the taroka card they have found the beast and a the good beast. hint towards the next one that i have yet to share there you go and we will be right back okay we are back from break uh we're going to pick up where we left off uh so it is now morning everyone can wake up and have their long rest it can <gasps> be oh thank goodness get all your health points back. <laughs> All my spells. You want to know what's really <sighs> funny? I had forgotten about ranger spells until yesterday, so I didn't have oh. any of them prepared this whole time. What? Oh, my goodness. What? I had you forgotten have... all about it. You have oh not been gosh. playing your character. So why do you think I used, like, three spells? To... I mean, granted, a couple of them were normal Emrah Emra spells, but... All right, let me uh, the ranger spells. <laughs> I forgot about them. So you guys all wake up, and what are you doing now? I'm well, sharpening the bladed part <clears throat> of the glaive. So I'm I'm passing out food or something. I don't know, pocket bacon. Pocket so bacon. Um, yeah, pocket bacon, yum! Pick <laughs> off the lint mine. First. This is mine. <laughs> <laughs> so we just need to check on the wizard of wine. Yes. We just need to see what is up with him not delivering something. And crossing our fingers is nothing major. So it's on the way to Kresk, according, according, uh, according to our map. So why don't we check that out first and then take the kids home? That sounds reasonable. Yes, and it is on the way. It makes sense to me. All right. Well, let's go. Mia, are you awake? Are you feeling okay? Do you need a puke bucket? Where's, where's Henrietta? Yeah, uh, uh... Please don't tell me you ate her. Um... I'm like Any... rubbing... I'm like rubbing my temples. Let's just say she's probably in a better place. Where's my chicken? <laughs> oh, don't worry, she's... I kind of look around like the air and kind of like try to look look through the ground or whatever so uh around is anyone getting 10th kingdom vibes here <laughs> <laughs> i gave you a rabbit 
Must have walked away. I don't know. Uh, it's it's gone now. <laughs> I forgot all about that. That's awesome. <laughs> Always in my mind. <laughs> okay, so eventually you guys uh, get all of your stuff together. You collect the children. Uh, you all make your way outside of the cave. You, uh, you see that Zula turns to you and she explains that she can lead you guys uh, back to the wizard's tower pretty easily, go back the way you guys came. So eventually uh, Lake Baratok does come into view. You guys do see it as you march along. Uh, you see that the water there is pristine and beautifully blue. It's not Do moving. I see any it's fish. Uh, go ahead and make a perception check. See if you see anything jumping out there. 19. Um, so you believe you see something out in the distance, but it is still foggy here in Barovia, as it is mm -hmm. all the time, slightly misty. Um, so you believe you see something out there, maybe a splash you hear as we're walking, but you can't see that far into it. You just notice that the water is pretty still where you are, and it's pretty, pretty color blue. Is it like um crater lake where you can see through it or is it just no it's just okay. a, a a colorful looking color or a beautiful looking color uh mm -hmm. which is kind of nice in this very dark and gloomy world that you have found yourself in man that's all i got from a 19 room mm -hmm. well remember the people in uh, Vileki have been saying they've had trouble fishing for the last little while so true, true. and it's foggy so you I mean you can't see much but you can hear what you assume might be fish jumping out there so anyway you guys continue to walk you get back to uh the wizard's tower that you had found earlier you see that uh the wagon is still gone that the girl took from you um or not took from you but that she owned and you francisco guys francisco lets out a deep sigh <sighs> you and all of your women Hey, mm. this one's different. Why is it she different? Can, because she can kick my butt, and I find that very attractive. I got could your, could kick your butt. She would freaking possess me and kill me. That is different than kicking butt. That is literally like destroying my soul. That is different. I still ship you with Agatha. No, uh, no, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> So you guys keep walking. Uh, you find your way into the trail that is just south of the mage's tower. Uh, it leads you into the Sphalic woods, uh, and you follow the muddy, dirty trail until you come to a T in the road. You know that if you are to go left or east, you would make it towards the road that will lead you back to... Um, uh Vileki essentially so you choose to go west instead uh you turn and follow the road until you get back to the paved old Svalik road it has cobblestone it's like a cobblestone street like you would see in the old roman times um very sturdy long lasting with ruts into the road where carts have gone eventually you make it to the T in the road that would either lead you well Eventually, you get to a T in the road and you see uh, the weather-worn signposts next to the road. Three of the uh, three of arm, the three arms of the signpost along the three branches of the road. Uh, the arm pointing north reads Cresc, and through the woods you can see an arching stone bridge spanning a river. The arm pointing east reads Vileki, and that would be like a southeast. And the road slopes up gradually in that direction. The arm pointing southwest raids the Wizard of Wines. The road slopes gently downward in that direction. Uh, everybody ready to hopefully not run into trouble? Yes, I am okay. completely ready. I'm just kind of like, so. as we're walking, yeah. I'm kind of crackling lightning in my hands. I am so itchy to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you guys uh, take the road leading towards the Wizard of Wines, and you see that after a half mile, the road becomes a muddy trail that meanders through the woods, descending gradually until the trees part, revealing a mist-shrouded meadow. The trail splits. One branch heads west into the valley, and the other leads south into dark woods. 
A wooden signpost at the intersection points west and reads, Vineyard. Hmm. So, would he be living at the vineyard or would it be the other yeah. way and he only goes to the vineyard to collect his You know, let's try, let's try the vineyard first. Is the vineyard going into the forest or into the meadow? Um, so the vineyard is going to be going into the valley and then the other one, the south leads, uh, to the woods. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's investigate the, uh, the valley first. Okay. So you guys choose to go towards the valley and a light drizzle begins to fall. Unpainted fences blindly follow the trail, which skirts north of a sprawling vineyard before bending south toward a stately building. The fog takes on ghostly forms as it swirls between the neatly tended rows of grapevines. Here and there you see rope-handled half-barrels used for hauling grapes. North of the trail is a large stand of trees and a man wearing a dark cloak and cowl stands at the edge of the trees, beckoning you. That is suspicious. Uh, can I tell um, if his intentions are good or evil? Um, I mean, I guess you can do an insight check on someone that's just waving at you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, uh, I, I, I turn to I everyone. Want. Do it with disadvantage, oh, because there's not on. a lot to read there. I guess maybe body language, but... So disadvantage or not disadvantage? Uh, still with disadvantage because there's not okay. a lot to pick up on. It's a two-point difference. So insight, it's a 19. Okay. Um, you see that it looks like it's like... Like... like uh, get over here, I, I turn to the others. I'm Okay, I, I will talk to that man. You guys protect the children. I'll see what's up, you know? If someone wants to back me um, up, it is okay. I I'll will come, come with you. you. Okay. I guess I'm staying with the kids. I didn't yeah. realize I was yeah. a babysitter. Great. Hey, hey. You're the you best see. with kids. He looks like he's a, he's intending for us to follow quickly. There may be something out there, so maybe we should all just go. Yeah, that's hey, fine by me. Want. I'm going to go talk to the man. And I walk I'm over to the follow. robe cloaked man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I so you guys, <clears throat> you guys all walk forward, and you see that on the edge of the trees, the cloak man is 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 continuing to. He's like, "Come on, come on, quickly, quickly, come this way, please, please, please." And you guys all come into this meadow of trees, and this man is standing there, and he's like, "What, what are you doing here?" Um, I, I, we are here to check on a on a shipment of wine. Well, and the individual whom it's been produced by. Yes, trying to see if people are, are still alive Are you the wine wizard? Do you know the wine wizard? Did you kill the wine wizard? Uh, Did you eat the wine wizard? There is no wizard. It is just my family. It is my family who who runs this vineyard. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know if it was the gods or fate or something. Um, you said someone sent you to check on stuff. I appreciate that very much. Um, hopefully our customers are appreciative of what we do enough, and apparently right. they are because right. they sent you. Um Yes. Cut to the chase. Okay, okay. Well, so, um, m my name is is uh, Davian. Uh, this is my this is my vineyard. Um, and and lately uh, there has been a problem. You, you see that as he says that, all of a sudden a bunch of ravens come down from the trees and land, and they all transform into a bunch of different oh. people. Hello. Oh, hello uh, there. No, welcome back, I guess. He says, uh, my name is Davian Martikov. Um, and there's been a problem here. Okay. Um, a little while ago, a few days ago, a bunch of wild druids um, and, and their blights came out of the woods and they've kicked us out of our out of our vineyard. We haven't been able to make anything or produce anything. We haven't been able to do anything. Um, is there any way you could help? What I look are at blights? Um, what are blights? Yes, what are blights? <laughs> uh, you guys can make can uh, I, can an I intelligence see I'm or history I'm as, them. Okay. As, as a druid, what I could I... I mean, if you want to, but she did ask them, so he can just answer. They're, they're little uh, wooden tree uh, uh, twig people. Oh, 
about those they're, things. We've killed they're them terrible before. little things. Uh, oh, those are the things that we killed that forever were in ago? The, yeah, the one that yeah, was in the haunted house. Um, yeah, yeah, with oh, the one. Well, um, now I can maybe settle non-violently. Hmm? I can duck, to, you know. Sticks. Hello. I've tried that kind of thing before. It, with this kind of type of uh, living plant. And it doesn't. Um, well, alternatively, well. what are they things, doing? They do not see reason. These are wild, wild uh, druids and the blights that they bring. Uh, they have been a curse on this land for forever. And uh, finally, they grew balls enough to come and kick me and my family out and attack us. And we need that vineyard. That vineyard is, is my family's everything. You have no idea how much it means to us and how much it means to, to all of Barovia. Without that vine, there is people, no hope. There is none. Yes. Okay, I so want your, to... your alcohol brings people joy. What are the druids doing? I have no idea. They came and attacked and we ran. Uh, I'd like to insight whether or not the druids are like the bad people. Yeah, go ahead. Can I? If that's true or not. Can I do a perception to see if I see any druidic writing anywhere? Or symbols? Uh, sure. If you want to see any signs of druids, go ahead. Because I can write and read druid. Yeah, it's probably not. 22. High. So he seems to be, from what you can gather, <clears throat> knowing a Martikov and a family of Martikovs already, um, and knowing that they're pretty upstanding people, you assume that this person is good. Um, and that what they're saying is probably true. He's on the level. Yeah, I got a thirteen. He's not just saying. The, yeah, me. You would probably assume that as well. Oh, I, I was talking. Oh, about perception, for looking for runes. runes. Um, yeah, druidic writing or symbols or stuff that I would recognize as a druid. No, speak those things. Not in that area. Because mm -mm. you guys are probably, you guys are probably a good eighth maybe quarter of a mile from the house proper you guys are on the edge of the trees as you are walking down the trail in the valley oh. from the edge of the trees someone was beckoning you and you had to run all the way over there so you guys are a bit bit of a ways away why don't we sneak up and can kind of do some surveillance and then hold on i have a question for our friend um does the innkeeper the mat mat Matiga. It's not coming out. Do you know his out. name is Erwin? Erwin? Does he not know what is going on? Do not tell me Erwin is the one who sent you. He's very concerned. Why? Is there, there a family feud? There he should be concerned. Why? That is family business. Do not uh, worry about that. Family feud. Got it. All right. Well, he... um. Is worried about you, so uh It's the first time in his life he's worried about anything. Mm. Anyway Sounds like a family misunderstanding and I don't want to get into it, so I guess we can help him by helping you. Well, we would very much appreciate that, me and all of mm. my family. And he points over and you guys see like he's got uh there's two three older gentlemen um and not older but like probably in their 20s and 30s there's a, a woman about her 20s and 30s and then there's um four children running around hey i see you have some children uh we have a couple that we are taking home but if we're going to do this for you we need them not in danger so how about you watch them for us while we go figure this out of course no that is not a problem we will watch them um if you can go and take care of this for us i will be more than grateful. But first, let me ask my companions. Do you guys want to fight some druids? I am not opposed to it. How you do know, you feel about it, me? After um, after a while, it's it's it'll be nice to um, beat up some of them. Yeah. Do you ever think it gets druids? Don't don't you remember? He does. He he had the thing and the the all the things. He doesn't like other druids very much. I cannot remember. It remember okay. when we uh, had remember. that one druid in the party? I was kind of like, oh well, no. Yes, I do recall your awkwardness, but 
uh, there well, was I one guess point if... to where I was kind of aggressive towards another druid. I don't remember where. Anyways, um, but I you're mean, cool with hurting your own. Oh, I don't care. All right, Kinsley, what do you want to do? I mean, we're here as a favor to uh, Irwin, so. Plus, mm -hmm. I want to pay yeah, off. We need this. to see it through. Well, yeah. technically, we have already done the part of seeing if everything is okay. So this is sort of already. This is a little going a little step further, just a eh, little bit. I don't like to leave something half finished. I like Erwin. He's helped us a lot, so I'm all right with returning the favor. In more than just hey, what's going on? Check up on things. I agree. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I am assuming. We, hold, 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 hold on. Hold on. Do we want the element of surprise? I mean, yeah. I can always ask for any information about. Why don't you things. check me? Check to see if your uh nature buddy spirit whatever you talk to. See if they have any intel on what is going on, and then we can decide if what direction we go in, or you know, see if you can get the location. I don't know. Um, I can buddies. always find some animals around us and ask fauna? them. Uh, I mean, well, whether animals. you want to talk to fauna or foliage doesn't matter to me. Not not fauna, and I could locate some animals. You just and want to locate them. them. You don't want to talk to them. Locate them so we can talk to them and ask. Why don't them you for just help. talk to your grass? Because grass doesn't move, and this grass may not know about what happened nearer that. All house. right, so go find your fauna. So we need to go to the house. What? Because because I'm you saying said animals. The animals fauna, might not oh, have seen something. Okay. Okay, when you said fauna, my brain is thinking about plants. You're flora. probably foliage. meaning something That's else. Flora. Okay, okay. Foliage or flora, yeah. Fauna, animals. Okay, so flora, fauna is plants. animals. Okay. I was confused because I'm like, <laughs> why are you saying plants are plants? I don't understand. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> okay, okay. Math is math. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. My bad. So I what, clarified. what kind of animal... Do you want to look for just and any probably one? something that would you know travel? So like a squirrel, a mouse. I mean, whatever. Are you guys you saying this stuff like... out loud? Is you're just having conversations? Yeah, I mean, there? we could always We're just ask the ravens, you know, like, that uh, are standing me, next to us. Are... We have been here for days outside waiting. So um, do you know the location of the, the druids top. that we are going for? They are everywhere. They are everywhere. inside the house. They are outside the house. They are everywhere. Oh, okay. uh, do you idea. have a specific current location where we can just sneak in, take them out, sneak around, take the other one out? Well, on on the side of the house, um, if you go towards the house and you go to the right, um, uh, on the side of the house, there is, it would be the west side, there is the door that we used to run out of. Um, and that, I believe, we left unlocked. Um Gold going through, through the front door is not going to work. Okay. What if I went out front, shouted, I challenge the strongest man here, and I kill him? Or I can walk through the walls where they cannot see me, and I can find out exactly where they are, and we can just pick them off. You I mean, can you... walk through walls? Aphrodite taught me a spell that I finally figured it out. <sighs> X-Men. So, <laughs> I'm just thinking about all the well, times. <laughs> in that case, I uh, am going to give Vigilant Blessing to Imra. What does okay. that do again? Just advantage on initiative. Cool. So, this last, I believe, took for a whole day. Let me find the spell. I read this several times to make sure that I knew what it was exactly. I just don't remember how long it lasts. So I have a question. Mm-hmm. 
I have a spell that talks about CR rating equating to a character's level. Does that mean if someone is level 7, the CR rating of the creature would be equal to CR 7? So, no. CR rating is is different than your level. CR rating is going to be, like, how yeah. difficult it is to kill something. That's what and I thought. Yeah, you can go as low as, like, a one-eighth CR rating, like... It starts and, really low and wait, and goes up to one, yeah, yeah. then two, then three. So your level is going to be quite a bit different. What is so then, the name of the spell? That I am using? No, no that, that me's talking about. Oh, me's talking I about. want it to be a surprise, but it's Polymorph. Oh, oh I love Polymorph. Mm, polymorph is great. I have yep. it prepared. All right. I only have one spell slot. I can step into... What out is it? Um... <laughs> What? How does polymorph work? The uh, the CR rating equating to a character's level. Oh. Because, yeah. You'd have to look that up. Are you trying to like polymorph one of your friends? If I were to polymorph another player character, it says that I can polymorph them up to a CR rating equal to their character level. Um, if they, you know, oh well, then target. I guess yeah, then, yeah it'd yeah. be level seven. It'd be it'd be the equivalent. Yeah. So so like if it, you can. You can do someone, I guess. Well, what's the CR level you can go up to right now? Well, it's any CR level equal to the CR level of the target and, and below, um, or a CR level equal to the character's level if they don't have a CR rating. Player characters don't have a CR rating. They yeah, so we would be level. a level seven. So we would be a CR seven is what you would be able to turn us. Right. Up. So you can transform them into creatures, something. Though. Yeah. Polymorph. Yeah. That's is the a, point. Yeah. But it's also like you can turn a really high CR seven monster into something like a bunny. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Classic. What's the CR rating of a T-Rex? But like a young blue dragon, or like I mean, a young silver we fought, young that's blue dragon, I believe, young... is like a CR twelve. That's no, this is. Oh wait, hold on. Am I looking right? Oh no, that's seven eight. No. That's a CR oh, nine for a young blue dragon. Uh, CR seven young black dragon or young copper dragon though. I mean, we fought a green, a baby green, or a young green dragon at level what five? I guess that's true. It's just so crazy. Guys could be a drag. So is it is it relevant to what we're doing right now? Yeah, you know, I was thinking about, you know, like if anyone's a whale. We don't want to someone. destroy the vineyard in the yeah, process. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would, yeah, you would have to destroy <laughs> stuff Counterproductive. I mean, there's yeah. a ton so of other things that could turn you into. It says any beast. So there's that stipulation of beast. Dragon is not a beast. Dragon okay, is a dragon. So any beast that is. Okay, okay. But Otherwise, you're right. T-Rex. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. So what are we doing? Okay, so here is what I can do. I can, for eight hours, step into the ethereal plane. Nothing outside of the ethereal plane can perceive me, but I can look into our plane. I can walk through walls, I can travel willy-nilly, and it'll be all good. So I can walk the vineyard, check out locations, walk through the house, Check locations that way. Even if they move around a little bit, we have a general idea of where everybody is. Or we can just sneak around and try our luck. I think that's a great idea. Everybody cool to chill here for a little bit? Yeah. Very well. I cast etherealness. And okay. I disappear. Let me read that real quick. It's kind of long. Do you want me to paraphrase? Yeah, go ahead and paraphrase. Okay, so, like I said, I step into the ethereal plane, um, which overlaps the plane that we're in. I can see 60 feet around me. Nothing outside of the ethereal plane can um, see or affect me. I cannot affect anything outside of the ethereal plane, but I can see into ours. Um I can walk through walls like I'm, I don't have don't have any obstructions. Um, and when I drop the spell or if the spell ends, I end up on our plane wherever it is that I was 
in the ethereal plane. If there is an object, I get shunted away from it. Um, uh, yeah, so I think that's the important part. So essentially, you're just like part. invisible. I'm invisible, okay. but I can walk through things. Right. I'm okay. a ghost. Okay. Um, and if you want, you can, I mean, feel free to read it. Yeah, and there you are. But that's essentially the gist. <laughs> so you move slowly because every foot of movement costs an extra mm -hmm. foot. So right, you'd right. only be able to move 15 feet per round. But... But it's eight hours, if so it doesn't I'm, matter. Right, and I'm also, I could be dashing because I'm, this isn't going to, I can't be perceived. So I don't have to be sneaky. So and everything looks gray and you can't see more than 60 feet. <laughs> Unless there's a special ability they have that's given to them to like see me. They can't do or see anything. Okay. Okay. Cool. So you cast etherealness. Yep. And so you start to approach the uh, the Wizard of Wines. Um. Well, they said they were everywhere. So I'm going to. Do, um, well, maybe I'll do that on my way back. So I'm going to. I'm just trying to scout everyone and to the best of my ability get a location. They, okay. Did they say how many there were? They did not. Because they, they just said there's a lot, and they're, like, all over the winery. Okay. So, at this point, the goal is to see if there are any specific locations that they would be grouped together, or if it's just that they are just literally just everywhere. Okay. So, uh, you start to make your way toward the building and the winery. They pretty much tell you that they are situated, like, in and around the building. Um, so you start making your way in that direction. You see that situated in the midst of the vineyard, the winery is an old two-story stone building with multiple entrances, thick ivy covering every wall, and iron fencing along its roof line. The trail ends at an open loading dock on the ground floor. A wooden stable of more recent construction is attached to the east side of the winery, next to the loading dock. West of the winery is a crumbling well and a wooden outhouse. Um, as you start to approach, you hear the rustle of dead vines all around you, um, and you see inhuman shapes are walking around the vineyard, their limbs crackling as they trudge forth through the mist and the rain. And I can ascertain that these are blights. You see a bunch of little needle blights. Okay. Um. A bunch of little needle blights. So, like, how big are they? So, um, they, I guess they are not really little. They are a medium plant. Okay, a medium plant. So they're so, probably the size of, like, a halfling. No, halfling is, like, well, I guess, I don't know what a medium plant is. Uh, but if it's medium in size, no, actually, no, it's uh, the size of a human. It is okay. pretty big. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so do... let me do something real quick. Okay, okay. Essentially, what my goal is, is I want to reveal the entire map. Which is essentially what I'm allowing you to do. <laughs> <laughs> because it makes it so much easier than me having to do stuff. So you came in around this area. You're coming in the front. And you see that this is essentially... Um, outside, you can see into this. It's just up off the ground. Um, so it's like an open roofed area. Um, you see the front of the house here and you see the stable, this where the uh, horses would be and the wagon for loading the wine. Um, in what direction are you heading? Well, I mean, I'm really just going to be walking through the walls and looking at everything. So okay. every room I want to see like where these where they're gathering okay for the most part so that we can deal with the bigger problems and then check out the rooms that it seems they weren't in at least while I'm doing this take okay. care of those at the after the fact 
So you walk over and you kind of you look into the loading dock area and you see that parked in the loading dock is a wagon with three barrels set in braces on the bed. A raised wooden walkway runs along the west, south and east walls. Through a hole in the ceiling, you see the wooden arm of a loading crane with ropes and hooks dangling from it. So above this, there's like another upper level that has a crane that can drop stuff in here. Hmm. Um, tell me just where you want to go so I can... Tell you what's um, in the room. Let me just stick my head into the stables. Into the stables? Yeah, pull a Casper. Okay, so you stick your head into the stables, um, and you see that there are two draft horses here, um, and they're just kind of chilling and relaxing. No druids, no blights. Nope, nothing in there. So nothing in that whole stable area? Yeah, nothing in this stable area at all, except all right. for the two horses. I go back in to... Where I was, the loading area. Okay. And I'll take the path uh, to this area that I'm assuming are the stairs, but I'm not going to go up the stairs. I'm going to take here. the doors and okay. go In there? into that room. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. So you walk into this big room and the rich smell of fermenting wine fills this large two-story chamber. Chamber which is dominated by four enormous wooden casks, each one eight feet wide and 12 feet tall. A wooden staircase in the center of the room climbs to a 10 foot high wooden balcony that clings to the south wall, which has four windows set into it at balcony level. Stacked against the wall underneath the balcony are old empty barrels with the Wizard of Wines burned into the sides. The balcony climbs another five feet as it continues along the west and east walls ending at doors leading to the winery's upper levels, uh, or upper level. Underneath these side balconies are several doors, some of which hang open. Beneath the sloping roof stretched thick, uh, stretch thick rafters, upon which scores of ravens have quietly gathered. They watch you with great interest. Except they can't see me. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, you're invisible, so... They there are I'm a bunch of ravens unless in there. they have like true sight or can see and well can true sight see yeah true sight gives yeah, you true into sight the ethereal see. plane mm -hmm. right because yep. I'm not invisible I'm on a different plane right okay um I don't see any druids or sticks uh make a perception check sixteen. So you do see, walking along the rafters up above you, the balcony creaks, drawing your eye to a wild-looking figure hunched over the westernmost cask. Um, so yeah, the, the western cask over here. Um, mm -hmm. Pouring a flask of thick syrup into it. She wears a gown made of animal skins and a headdress with goat horns, and her hair is long and unkempt. She's pouring something into the wine? Yep. Okay. Um, do I see any other druids? Mm. I'm going to keep walking around. I'm going to event I'm going to cover every five foot square and just so that nothing can escape so, my notice. I need you to be more specific about like where you're looking. I'm covering everything. I know. But, okay, well then roll uh, in another investigation check. Investigation? Nine. Okay, that druid is all you see. Okay, um, I go into, I walk through the wall of the room that is like, can anything here no um the one where it on the other side are the stairs where it's an entrance right here no um that's next to the door or where right. i just entered over here i just entered there i want to yep. go up you want to go up the stairs no, no, no. in the room i was in okay now the first room right that one yeah i want to stick my okay. head through the wall okay um, you see that strips of iron and wood lie in neat piles on the floor of this workshop, the walls uh, of which are lined with tools. Two work tables stand against the east wall. 
uh, poking your head in, you don't see anyone in there. I go to the next one. Okay, this barrel room. Mm -hmm. Uh, So rows of new barrels fill this room. A narrow stone staircase spirals upward in the southwest corner, uh, but you don't see anything in there. I go to the next room. This one here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you step outside and you are now on a veranda. Resting on a flagstone veranda are three five-foot diameter wooden tubs, their insides stained with grape juice. Each tub has a short ladder bolted to its side and a catch basin tucked underneath. At the back of the veranda is a large set of sliding wooden doors as well as normal size wooden doors. Stone pillars and arches support the upper floor above. Uh, but you don't see any anything out there except for the uh, twig blights you saw marching out front. Okay, but they're not on the veranda. They're no beyond. I'm going to go back to the barrel room. Okay. And I'm going to take those stairs. Okay. So, do, do, do let me... Oh, a point of interest here. I can move up and down. Oh, you can just, like, float up and down? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I'm That's just going to go... Cool. Okay. Take advantage of that. Aphrodel would be so proud. He's like, oh my goodness, she's doing it. She's doing it. <laughs> Okay, so you pop up here into this hallway. I check the first room. The one that's right here? Yep. Okay. So uh, you see that this room contains a rectangular table surrounded by eight chairs, an L-shaped cupboard, and a floor-to-ceiling closet pantry. Next to the pantry is a small iron stove, but you don't see any bad guys in there. I'm really confused at this point because I've only seen one druid and they're like, there are so many. Okay, um, I check the room that is this way. Oh, you guys don't this work one? out. It's not worth it. <laughs> this one? Yeah, that one. Okay. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. I have to keep scrolling back up to my <laughs> DM map so I can see <laughs> which Sorry. one it is. Okay. <laughs> Um, so this room contains a four-poster bed, its headboard carved in the likeness of a great raven. A soft black rug covers the floor between the bed and the door. In the corners of the south wall stand two slender wardrobes with a tapestry of a church hanging on the wall between them. Beneath the tapestry sits a handsomely carved rocking cradle. To the north, under a window, is a plain desk and chair. Other furnishings include a wooden chest and a freestanding mirror in a wooden frame. Uh, but you don't see any bad guys. Oh, it seems they must be all gathered in one spot, maybe. All right. I walk through that room, back into that dining area, and then I walk into the next room. Okay. I love this spell <clears throat> so much. Yeah, this, this is pretty, this is uh, why pretty I, OP. This is why I grabbed it, the Horizon Walker. I wanted to do this so bad. Uh, so you actually check out both of the rooms and you see that there's in both rooms, there's two pairs of bunk beds uh, occupying the room uh, against the wall. West wall rests four identical foot lockers. And in both of these rooms, you don't see anything uh, besides a little. You see a little wooden Nightmare. Nightmare. Yes. Do you go ahead and give me an intelligence check so you could see what a nightmare is if you like nor know the lore? I will like tell you what it looks like, but you said intelligence or history. Well, it's the same. It's only a five. Time Lord is going on timeout. Okay. Well, you don't know what a nightmare is, but this is a little horse that has been painted black. And it's got fire coming out of its mane and the back of its hooves and its tail. Um, And on further investigation, you see that there is a small little slogan written on its tummy. And it said, is no fun, is no Blinsky. I knew it. So sad. Okay, I go to the next room. 
Okay, in the next room you see uh, in this chamber are a desk, a chair, a tall wooden cabinet, and a strange contraption that takes up most of the northern end of the room. And in here you do see a druid and two vine blights. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so in that end room... Yep, you see three creatures are here. One appears human, but is so caked with dirt and mud that it's hard to know for sure. Her hair is full of twigs, and her face is hidden behind a veil of moss. She's rooting through the contents of the cabinet and haphazardly tossing them onto the floor. Behind her stand two creatures made entirely of dead vines. Okay. So that's two so far. Um, I take that hall down the stairs. You're going to go this way? No, the spiral stairs. The spiral? Yeah. Okay, that just takes you back downstairs to... Let me do... Da -da 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 -da. Like, if I got halfway down and I saw it led back to the room I was in before, I would go back up and take the other stairs. It leads you, yeah, back into the vat room. Okay. So then I would take those, I would check out those other stairs. The, the These one, here? Yeah, yeah. So this just leads to the balcony that overlooks the vat room. Okay. And I, do I, is that where the druid I saw before was? The druid, yeah, is over here pouring is she still thick there? syrup. Um, at this point, no, she would not be there. Do I see where she was? Make a perception check. Remember, you can only see 60 feet. I know. I'm walking around, though. Yeah. I'll, I'll walk some more if I need to. Why are, why are we getting all these nines? Um, perception. 13. Mm, you don't really see where she went. I take the stairs going down. Okay. So you go back down into the vat room. I guess. Do I see any more stairs? Uh, no. I mean, not in this room. I mean, no. You see these stairs going back up into the balcony, but that's it. Do I see any stairs that go down? Mm. Like the, into a basement. And all of my wandering around, because I've pretty much covered the whole house by this point, right? At least the two levels. Um, I mean, as much as you've wanted to explore, yeah. Well, I mean... You're telling me where you're going, and I'm telling you where things are that you tell me where you're going. I'm not just going to tell you everything. I know, I know, You I have know. to tell me where you're going. I know, I know. I'm trying... I can't see the whole thing, because I have another screen here, and it's... Oh. Okay. So, I'm also just trying to, like, cut on time and not have this take forever I know, in a day. but I'm not going to tell you everything, so you're going to have to take your time. Okay. So I took this room, I took that, the barrel room. I took the stairs of the barrel room, right? That's what led me upstairs? Yes. Okay, and I checked the other room, checked that room. Um, I didn't check the closet. Let me go to the closet. Um, the pantry or over whatever here? that is, yeah. So just, that... I just float around. Yeah, <laughs> All ethereal like. <laughs> so you go in... <laughs> You go into this room and you see that bare hooks line the walls of this storage room. Shelves to the south hold several pairs of stained wooden sandals with oversized soles. Both doors to this room hang open. The one to the west is fitted with iron brackets and leads outside into the rain. Lying on the floor next to it is a five foot long wooden beam. You assume that this is the room, the door that Davian was saying you could enter in through. Okay. Um... I go back into the room that I was in. The, was it the vat room? The vat room. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to take the door, not the stairs, but the door opposite of the stairs. Down to here? Uh-huh. Is that okay. a kitchen? So you walk in to that room, um, and you see that a dirty window in the south wall allows dim light to enter this room. Wine bottles are manufactured here, as mm -hmm. evidenced by the tools lying about. The wooden rack full of freshly blown glass bottles, uh, freshly blown glass bottles along the south wall, the hearth built into the southwest corner, and the barrel of standing sand next to it. 
A staircase descends underground, and between it and the rack of bottles stands a barred door. So there is a staircase heading yeah, downstairs. Yeah, I want to I take those. Okay. That's what so I was head, looking for. You head downstairs, and you enter into this cellar. And I was thinking about just jumping and seeing if I could get down through the floor, but then what if I if there wasn't a basement and I just end up traveling through earth, get stuck or something? I don't know. <laughs> so you see that wooden pillars and beams support the ten foot high ceiling of this ice cold cellar, which is split in two by a five foot thick brick wall. A thin mist covers the floor. Each half of the cellar creates an eight-foot-tall wooden partition that doubles as a wine rack. The western rack stands empty, but the eastern one is half-filled with wine bottles, this here. Mm -hmm. um, and down here you do see uh, five needle blights and one druid. And it's not the same druid, the two druids I saw before, or is it one of the druids I've already seen? Uh, this is a different one. Okay. You see that it's uh, a humanoid figure, one with a full rack of antlers. Okay. And how many blights? Uh, five needle blights. Okay. So that's three so far. And I haven't seen where the first one went. I don't see her anywhere. Um, not down here. Mm -mm. Okay. I walk around. Do I see anything else in this room that is something to note? Uh, depends. I mean, are I'm, you I'm, searching I'm looking and investigating? I mean, I don't know how much investigation I could really do since I can't actually affect anything on the plane I'm not on. So I'm just doing a thorough search around just to make sure that I'm seeing all the druids, all the blights, and enemies, essentially. I use that word way too often. Can you feel on the... what's on the material plane? Um, it says that I cannot be affected. Okay, oh, never wait, mind then. Wait, wait, wait. Did you say on the ethereal plane or on the plane I am? On the plane you're looking at. Can you feel yeah, what's on? I mean, it says well, you can only affect and be affected by other creatures on the ethereal plane. Creatures that aren't on the ethereal plane can't perceive you and can't interact with you unless a special ability or magic has given them the ability to do so. You ignore all objects and effects that aren't on the ethereal plane, allowing you to move through objects you perceive on the plane you originate from. I don't see anything that says... I can move in any direction. I can see and hear the plane I originated from, but everything there looks gray, and you can't see anything more than 60 feet. I don't see anything that, like, specifies whether I can actually, like, move things, like, whatever. I'm assuming I can't. I'm not worried so much about you moving things. It's more so about you feeling um, things. But if you can't, then you would have no reason to investigate any further. I mean, I guess that would be up to your discretion. You're not physically on the material plane, so mm -hmm. yeah, I'd say yeah. you wouldn't. Okay. I mean... Do I see anything suspicious? Since I am dealing with druids, and I've seen me do weird stuff, so do I see anything suspicious? Um, Make a perception check. Okay, okay, okay. That's an 18. Okay. So looking around, um, eventually you start to look around this wall that kind of divides the two, like the room into two. Mm -hmm. um, as you are walking up here, you notice that there is a crack in this wall. You push through the crack and walk into the other side. Um, and you kind of just see this very dark tunnel that stretches for 15 feet, ending at an archway beyond which lies a shallow cave. I walk down it. Um, so you walk down and you see that this cave is covered in something along the walls and along the cave in the back. It's like a brown, mossy something. Go ahead and give me an intelligence or history check. 
Man, they're both a zero. <laughs> Two. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't look interesting. But I am suspicious of the moss and the cave and everything, so that is an, a point of interest. Do I see any way into this area? Because it was a crack, so it wasn't. it's not like it's big enough for anyone to go through unless they're using like some kind of magic to part it Lore so it was no stuff but it, i don't think it, emma would you wouldn't you weren't able to touch anything so all you mm -hmm. saw was a crack but it's just like a crack not a big crack not it's anything a you perfectly can lined crack that goes from oh. the floor up to probably about six feet seven feet tall okay but i don't see any other entrance or exit um, and I don't see anybody in here. Nope. And I don't see any tunnels or any signs of, like, coming in or out through the earth itself. Nope. Okay. I leave. Okay. I pause in the room, ignoring the druid that's there, arms crossed. Like, they said there are many, but I've only seen three. Okay. They said there were many things around, not necessarily druids. Many druids. They're... Okay. I'm, I interpreted it as many druids, but I, that was just my mental interpretation. So, okay. Um, I go back upstairs. Okay. Let me see real quick. Is there any other place I haven't walked through? I, I mean, I've checked everything out at this point, yeah? At least inside. I think I have. I'm going to run through the house real quick one more time. Um, trying to cover all my bases. And this time I want to do more of a search for any weird stuff. Like the crack in the wall. See if I notice anything strange and alien to me. But would probably be something I'd find familiar because of me. So druidy anything? So that kind of stuff, you are already breaking the game by me allowing you to do all this without anything affecting you on the ethereal plane. <laughs> so no, D &D. unless you tell me something specific, I'm not going to allow you to do that. I'm looking specifically for druidy things I would recognize because of me. Which room? Like you need to be... I mean, I'm checking all of them, but f okay, we can go through each one. The vat room first. So out of all the rooms you've checked, what I've told you is exactly what you've seen. Okay, that's that's all I, I was just, you know, I'm trying to be thorough here. I don't want any surprises, man. Okay, so I leave and I go walk the vineyard and see if there are just blights walking around, get a vague location, and make sure that maybe that's all the druids there are. Yeah, everything you see is um, like where I told you in and around the house. You go and walk the, the grapevines and whatnot. And although it's foggy, there's not much out there. There's You don't see any creatures. It seems that the druids and their blights are specifically targeting the building itself. Okay. And there were only... Um, what do you say? There were blights around the stable side of the house they were all around the front all around the front and they were probably i mean they were they were leading so up to it leading okay, up so to the front kind of sentry like but scattered all in the front um i want to check the the side with the whale the well okay and the outhouse because that's the side that he said was unlocked so i want to see if there are any like are there any blights patrolling that area um, no, not necessarily. Most of the ones that are outside are actually like a hundred feet in front of the house. It's like okay, they're so patrolling there's... a little ways away. Okay. So we could probably sneak past them, but that's a conversation to have with the others. Okay. I go back to the others. Okay. So you slowly start to make your way back, um, moving slowly because you are kind of in the ethereal plane and you're keeping a lookout for anything that is in the ethereal plane that may come after you. Uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. Also, as I am doing this, I'm keeping an eye out for anything that is personally familiar. Mm -hmm. But I rolled a natural one. So you don't see anything. So I don't see anything. 
Uh, eventually, you do make your way back to your friends without incident. And I assume you come out of the yep. ethereal plane. All right. So, Hello. it oh. seems that there are, as far as I could tell, three female druids. Um, several blights. They are everywhere. Uh, there are vine blights, uh, needle blights. And I think those were the only... Mm. Twig blights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, twig? Twig blights, yeah. So twig. vine, needle, and twig. So we... And there are several of them. But if I recall, they weren't too difficult to deal with. However, they are all around the house. So unless we want to draw attention to ourselves and like set them on fire, which wouldn't be good for the vineyard and home itself, um, my suggestion is that we sneak to the door that was unlocked, go in and um, take out the druids and the blights that are with them. Also, I found you. Do you know about the uh, cave in your, uh, in your basement? Uh, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, how do you get in and out? Um... Well, I mean, I guess it doesn't hurt to tell you. There's nothing down there that's important besides the, the brown mold itself. Um, what is the brown mold? Uh, it's 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 what we. It is a naturally occurring thing uh, that we have harnessed and used to keep the cellar a very cold temperatures. Mm -hmm. um, brown mold just gives off a very cold. It eats heat. Uh, you don't want to get too close, um, or it may start sucking the life out of you. If you touch it, uh, it will suck every heat out of you. That's why it's locked away, hidden behind a secret door. You don't okay. want to go and, well, and mess with that. There is moss growing all over it, so... Yes, and it's it's hidden behind the secret door. It's not in the cellar, it's down right. in a cave that no one can I'm, get to. I'm just wondering if, like, druids, it's not such a big deal to them because, you know... Through it, whatever. Oh, I don't know. Well, I they don't... would have to find it. If it meant anything, they would have to find it. True. Okay. Well, the point is, I see what well, I saw. Three uh, druid ladies, and they have blights with them. So I can pass without a trace so that we can be sneaky, kind of pass the ones that are guarding the front area, get into the door, sneak in, find the three druids. I mean... It won't be a surprise once we hit the first one, but at least we'll have the element of surprise for the first one. That seems uh, doable, maybe. All right. Yeah. Um, I can only do this once per day, so I won't be able to do it again. For, you know, at least until we go to sleep. Well, um, right before we do encounter anyone... Just let me know when that happens so I can call for some help when we uh, go into combat. Because I found out I have some very helpful friends I can call. Okay, so if we're going to sneak in, um, are you wanting them to stealth with us? Or um, do you so want to I wait until we're actually attacking? So I preferably don't have to take an action to summon them. Right, but... If you use any kind of magic or whatever, we are no longer in stealth. So, mm -hmm. if you want them... when it, Right before, if we were to, you know, fight. So, it would be a part of your surprise attack. Instead of actually attacking, okay. you would summon your creatures. Or whatever it okay. is you're going to do. That's fine. Yeah? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I just want to make sure we have everything in order. Usually... Things go very weird, so I'm I'm trying to be smart about it, but we'll see how that goes. I I think I would just rush in and then kill. Yes, everything. exactly, and I would like to, yeah. you know, druids can be can be very interesting foes. Case in point. Yes. I point. I I gesture to me. <laughs> I do so, like a little. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um. If everybody is ready, I'm going to pass my. I'm going to cast my spell. It's a plus ten to your mm -hmm. stealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hey. cast pass without a trace. The DM Sa hates saves. me for my new spell. Saves <laughs> me. Saves me for uh, using that spell slot. There you oh. go. So, uh, Amrilir casts pass without a trace. Everyone, go ahead and give me stealth rolls. Ooh. Okay. Goodbye, dice. 
You guys are making your way to uh, towards the building in the vineyard. Uh, you get relatively close and you try to start to be you to be as sneaky as possible as you make your way to the side of the building where Davian told you to go and where Imrelir knows you need to go. What did everyone get? That's a 32. 20. That's a 28 with disadvantage. 19. Okay. 30. Did you add your plus 10? Yeah, I rolled oh, a 3. Wow. I rolled a, a 17 yikes. and a 16. I rolled a 19. And I, I keep dice two. hopping because I don't trust any of them and they're all proving <laughs> to be rude. Man, I have to decide between do I want to go with more of a a cool fun thing and have four of them or two pretty cool bad aces that are also cool. Okay. So you guys, you guys begin to sneak and get as close as you can to the house. You make your way over to where the well is. Emrelayer begins to point to the slightly open door. You made it past the twig blights that are marching in the front of the house. You begin to enter for the first time for most of you into the Wizard of Wines winery. You have come here to save the winery to figure out what is going on, and it seems that it has been taken over by some evil druids of Barovia and the things they managed to summon. And that's where we're going to end our session. <laughs> no, I thought it was already! Uh, Most of it was him walking around the house. <laughs> it's okay, I did, a lot of, I did a lot of reading in that time on I what too. I plan on playing around with, and oh, I'm Everybody so prepared. There you yeah, go. we're going to forget everything we prepared next week. You'll just have to watch <laughs> no, the episode bookmark. after I put it I'll... up on YouTube. I know, right? <laughs> oh, I meant like all the mental preparation we did for our plans when we got in there. <laughs> all right, yeah. Well, uh, well, just write it down. Write it down before you forget. Everyone watching at home, thank you so much. We appreciate uh, everything you do for us. Don't forget to hit the follow button if you're watching on Twitch. Like us on Facebook. Uh, Follow us on YouTube. We do have lakesidelegends.com, our website where we do post all of our media, and we do have a big announcement tonight. We are turning this uh, stream, this this campaign, into a podcast. Episode yeah. one, our, fi our like our first episode ever, is already up there. It is a very streamlined and very condensed version of the uh, campaign. So a lot of like sitting here calculating stuff mm -hmm. and other things. Like it's, it, I took it spells. all out. Yeah, it's all taken out. I mean, if it's a relevant spell, I keep the reading of that in so that people know. But like us trying to figure out what it is and how it does and how the dm whether what wants to allow stuff or not all that junk uh the first <laughs> episode was originally three hours and 38 minutes and i cut it down to two hours and 23 minutes Dang. so over an oh, wow. hour of material has been cut of just <laughs> dead air and calculating stuff so it is a lot more fun to listen to a lot more streamlined um unless you like the nitty-gritty if you like hearing us like argue, argue. About, about what works and what doesn't work yeah you're more than what we're going to continue to air this every sunday uh at 6 p.m at twitch.tv slash lakeside legends um also if you want to donate to us there is a donate button at the bottom of our twitch channel you can go to uh twitch.com or twitch.tv slash lakeside legends anytime and go and hit our donate button if you like what we do and you want to donate to us we would appreciate that very much does anyone have any other announcements they'd like to make um like i said last week my uh guest D, D one shot is it was moved to the 28th so i will have um more information on that as it gets closer cool i'm also getting ready to i'm finishing up the process of uh publishing the uh halloween one shot as well ooh, as the ooh. pirate one shot that we did forever ago if you guys uh watch that um they'll be posted through the dms guild uh so that should be coming within the next uh, week or two i just have some formatting things to do and it'll be up there awesome anyone else 
Okay. Um, also, we do have a scheduling conflict for next Sunday. So unfortunately, this stream will not be airing next Sunday. Instead, we are going to figure out something else to do, whether it's a one shot or uh, I don't know. Probably a one shot. Something. Uh, more than <laughs> likely, well, yeah, we'll probably do another one shot for you. But uh, that is all we have for this week. And we thank you so much for joining us. And we can't wait to see you next time down by the lakeside. See ya. Bye.